Hi, my name's Lauren. This tutorial is for those of you who are just about to start using Tapestry in early years. I'm going to take you through the very basics of getting set up, so logging in for the first time and going through the setup screens, which include enabling the frameworks you'd like to use and adding your term dates, then adding children and colleagues, and finally setting up groups. If you want to skip to any of those sections specifically, you can do so by clicking on the links in the description below. I'll give you a tour of the Tapestry website as we go, so you can get familiar with where you can go to find things, but I won't look at any of the specific features in this tutorial. The good news though, is that we have loads of other tutorials, which will show you those. You can find written ones on the Foundation Stage forum and videos there and on our YouTube channel. You can find links to both of those in the descriptions below too. Okay, so I'm assuming that if you're watching this, you've recently received an email from us with an activation link for your new account. If you don't have that in front of you, but you want to go through those setup screens with me, please pause the video now and go and find it. The email with it in will be from noreply at tapestryjournal.com and it will look like this. Once you do have it in front of you, just click on that first link. That will take you to this page, where you have to come up with the password and PIN you want to use. The password, along with your email address, will be your main way of logging into Tapestry and accessing all the data within it. So it's very important that this isn't easy to guess and that you keep it secure. The four digit PIN is for the app. After you signed in with your password, so the app knows who you are, it will let you log in subsequent times with just your PIN to save you from typing out your full login details every time. You'll also be able to set up fingerprint or face ID entry if you want and if the device you're using supports that. So as soon as you've done that, you can log in with those details. Now you'll be taken to the first of the setup screens. It is worth filling these in correctly, but nothing here is set in stone. So if you're not sure, you can just put in anything and you or anyone else you set up as a tapestry manager will be able to change it from within the control panel. On this first page, you should fill in how you'd like to be known on your account. Whatever you choose to fill in here will be how your name is displayed on the posts you make within tapestry. And it's worth bearing in mind that it will be visible to the relatives you set up as well as your colleagues. Then, if the country and time zone shown aren't correct, you can change those. Now, press continue. On this second page, you can choose which curriculums and or frameworks you'll be using on the account. If you're not planning to use Tapestry for recording anything to do with your frameworks or assessments, including reports, you won't need to enable anything and you can just skip this step by pressing continue now. If you think you will use it for keeping up to date with child attainment, creating reports, or keeping track of what you've assessed and when, then you'll want to click on these boxes to expand them and see your options. Let's look at the UK one. You'll be able to find EYFS and characteristics of effective learning here, so you might want to enable those, but you can also choose any others you think will be used on this account, like the SEND or the Cherry Garden frameworks. If you have multiple Tapestry accounts, you don't need to worry about what will be enabled on them. You're just thinking about this one. Equally, if you know that you personally won't be using one of the frameworks or curriculums, but one of your colleagues using the same Tapestry account will be, you should enable the ones that they'll be using too, because this applies to all users on the account, not just you. You can choose at this point whether to display assessments made for each framework to the parents or other relatives you've set up. If you tick to allow it, they won't be able to make any assessments or see any analysis screens, but if you assess any observations and make those visible to the families, they will be able to see the assessments. If you're not sure, keep it unticked for now, um, and you can always come back to it to make them visible later. When you're finished there, press continue. This final screen is about your term dates. 
If you are intending to use Tapestry to help you keep track of child attainment or what you've assessed, it is important that these line up with your term dates. Although, because this covers the full 365 days of the year, the start and end date of each period won't be precise. Again, this can be changed later, but you should really set this up before you start making assessments. Another thing to think about is how many periods you want. These are used when it comes to filtering and analysing what you add to tapestry. So if you know you'll want to compare what you've added between half terms, you should keep it at six. But if you're really only interested in looking at things on a term by term basis, then you can decrease it to three. You can change the number of terms by using this X or by clicking on the add period button down here. When you're happy, click continue to finish these setup screens and go to the main account. So here we are. This is where you'll be taken every time you log into the browser version of Tapestry from now on. Of course, it is completely empty right now, so you won't see any data in any of these tabs. I'm not going to go through all of these different features in this tutorial, but you can find out about each of them and others that aren't turned on by default in our other tutorials. You can find those by clicking on your name here and going to Help and Tutorials. OK, so we've covered logging in, enabling your frameworks and adding your term dates. So now let's move on to adding children and your colleagues. These are both done from the control panel. To get there, you need to click on your name and go to control panel. This section is only accessible to managers and is a really important area on your account. So it's worth spending a little time exploring it. It's where you'll go to do things like turn on features, add new users, change who can do what, and see detailed history of what has happened on your account. But right now, we're going to add some children. For that, you need to go to Manage Children on the left. Here, you can choose to either upload them in bulk via a CSV file or add them one at a time using the Add Child button. If you are adding them one at a time, it's quite self-explanatory. You just need to fill in the form and press Save at the end. I suspect quite a few of you will be uploading your children from an Excel document though. Again, it's a relatively simple process. You'll need to go to this section at the bottom of the page and find a CSV document with your children's details in from your computer. If it doesn't exist yet, you've got a few options. You can choose to export it from your school management system if you use one, adapt an existing spreadsheet of their details, or just start it from scratch. Whatever you choose, you can take a look at our written tutorial on the topic by following the appropriate link in the description below. Once you've created, found and selected it, click on the Upload button and then follow the steps. For the first and second steps, it will try to match up the columns on your spreadsheet with the information Tapestry can hold. But you can change any if they don't look right. Then on the third, you can choose which children to import or just select all. You'll also get the choice of importing them as enrolling or as active. As this is a brand new account, you'll want to choose active. That means they're ready to go now and you can start making observations, assessments, memos and activities for them as soon as you're ready. Next time you do this though, if you're adding children before they've officially started, you might find that the enrolling status is more appropriate. That allows you to do all the admin involved in setting them up, but means they won't start appearing in your lists of active children, for example, when making observations, and they won't take up any of your limited active child spaces, which is helpful if you're at your limit and children are leaving at the same time as this new cohort are joining. So that's it. Import them and you'll see them appear in your children's list. You can edit them over here, and you can add profile pictures for them using this button up here if you've got the images already. Again, you can find in-depth tutorials for this section and for adding profile pictures in the description of this video. Now let's look at adding your colleagues. You can add them from the Manage Staff section. It's a very similar process to adding children, but this time I'm going to take you through how to add them one at a time 
using this add staff member button. The first thing you need to think about is what kind of staff account do you want to give them? There are three to choose from, with manager being the same one as you, being able to access all of this control panel and having complete control over the account, including when speaking to the Tapestry product support team. We recommend that you have at least two managers on each account, because if you've only got one and that person leaves or goes away for a while without making someone else a manager, you'll be very limited with what you can do on Tapestry. Then there's full account. Like managers, these people can sign in with an email and password, so could log in from any device with a browser and an internet connection, even if it's outside of your school. They won't be able to access the control panel though, and what they can access from the main body of the account depends on the permissions you or other managers have given them. You can check out those permissions in the Use Permissions section, and by looking at the tutorial on it, link to the description. The final option is pin only staff. They're also limited by the user permissions you set for them, but they won't be able to log in with an email and password, meaning they can only access Tapestry on devices where a full staff member or manager has logged in, then clicked on the switch account option in the drop down from their name. Whatever you choose, you'll need to fill their name in here. For pin only staff, you'll also have to set a pin up for them and tell them what it is, although they can change it to something only they know when they first log in. If you're adding another manager or a full staff member, you can add their password and pin for them, but we really recommend that you choose the option of them getting an activation link via email instead. That means they'll follow the same process as you did at the very start of this tutorial. By doing that, you won't need to worry about passing on their details and making sure that they change them. Regardless of which option you choose though, please make sure you're positive you have the correct email address for them. If you put in the wrong one and someone else owns that address, they will be able to access your Tapestry account. The last option on the Add Staff page is one for attaching key children. This is one form of group which allows you to link specific children to a staff member. Your colleague will then be able to quickly filter the content on every page so that they only see the data relating to their key children, and those children will come up first when they make observations on the browser. Managers can also set it so staff can only see their own key children. You can add those children by clicking Attach New Child down here. But if you want to attach the exact same group of children to several staff members, you might find it quicker to do back on the Manage Staff page after you've set up groups. I'll show you that in a second. For now though, let's save the staff member and go back to that main Manage Staff page. You'll be able to see any new staff members you've added here. You'll be able to edit any existing staff members using the Edit button and various other things, including deleting them using the cog or the tick boxes. The quick way to add and change key children groups is here. But I'll show you how to set up official groups first of all before going into that. You can make groups from the Manage Group pages. You simply click Add Group, give it a name and a description if you like. And select the children. Then when you're happy, just press save. You can make as many or as few of these as you like and they don't all need to be done right now. So set up any obvious ones and come back to add more if you decide they'll be useful later. You'll be able to edit the children and the details of the groups from here, if you ever need to. Let's go back to adding key children to staff. You'll be able to add them using the Edit Relationships button, but it should be a lot faster now because you can add them as an entire group rather than selecting children one at a time. All right, that's it. You're now all set up and ready to start making observations, memos, reflections, and other pages.
please do take a look at our other tutorials to see how that's done. I've added some links into the description for things we've covered in this video and for things I think you might want to take a look at next. But remember, you can find the full list by clicking on your name and going to Help and Tutorials. Thank you and happy weaving!